I'm gonna show you how to stop rolling over like this and start doing this, which is hitting more line drives and extra base hits. See, the player that you see on the screen, he was hitting a lot of rollovers when I first met him. And even though it's still a work in progress, he is hitting less rollovers, less ground balls, more line drives, and extra base hits. So in this video, you'll learn seven reasons on why you're rolling over, and you're gonna get five drills to help you to fix it. And if you watch until the end, you'll learn how me or my team can help you with your rolling over issue by breaking down your swing like all the kids you've seen on this screen. These are the kids we've worked with and helped to start hitting more line drives and extra base hits. So definitely watch until the end so you can have a chance for that to happen. So with that being said, let's get started welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm former major league baseball player jermaine curtis and today what we're talking about is rolling over and i'm going to share with you the things that i did with the player that you've seen on screen i have been coaching him this summer with usa baseball and the new appalachian league and we're going to you know talk about the things that we worked on and that's helped him to be a better hitter. So before we get started, I wanna say something. When it comes to rolling over, what you need to understand is that um, everyone always says rolling over is your wrist going this way. And they're completely right. They're 100% right. And the way I like to say it is you, when you roll over, your hands become below the barrel. And you always want your hands to be above the barrel. So below the barrel, that's when you're going to roll over. So that's something that you want to, you know, keep in your mind is, are my hands getting below the barrel? You don't want your hands to be below the barrel. I don't care what hitter, you know, maybe even if it's a high pitch, but you don't want your hands to be below the barrel. If your hands are below, you're gonna really roll over and that's your top hand being a little bit too dominant. I know you guys are like, but Jermaine, you always talk about the top hand. Well, I'm just telling you, you don't want your top hand to be below the barrel, okay? So with that being said, let's do it. The first thing we talked about is his posture. See, as a hitter, your job is to have a strong base and stay in that posture. Stay with the same posture the entire time. Now, that's hard to do, but that's what you wanna do as a hitter. And you'll see in this video, which I'll show you right now. So one of the things you'll see is that he's in this position, he's getting ready to hit, okay? Look where he's at. Look where his shoulder's at. Right there, right? He's got in that launch position. He's ready to hit. But now, look how he starts coming out of that position, right? Look how he comes out of that position because that pitch was a ball. Pitch selection is key when it comes to rolling over and, and getting miss hits. So that right there, just the fact of him coming out of his base, coming out of his legs, and going to that ball, changing his whole posture, it forced him to roll over that ball. So that's the first thing you wanna see is your pitch selection. Are you swinging at the right pitches, right? Because if you're swinging at the right pitches, then you know, you're know you gonna stay in the same uh, posture. But if you start swinging at pitches like you see right there, you'll start changing your posture and that'll get you to start rolling over. And that's what we talked about is zoning in to pitches that he can do damage with, his zone that he can hammer the baseball. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna check that. So the next thing we talked about is his hands dropping. Okay, and look at this pitch right here. Same pitch, look how his hands goes down and they stay there. And so he's swinging at a pitch that is above his hands. So naturally what you'll do is you're going to roll over because your hands are below the baseball and you're trying to manipulate your body to get the barrel there. So that right there will cause you to roll over your hands. So we started to raise his hands higher and we'll talk about it later, later but we started to raise his hands higher so he can start getting to those pitches. So record yourself from a side view and check to see if your hands are too low. 
because you may be rolling over on high pitches because your hands are too low. So the next thing I wanna talk about is diving into the plate and your shoulders. These could be two different things, but I'll include them together, okay? So diving in, one of the issues that I had with him early on is that he would dive into the plate and then he would be pretty much like his shoulders would be pointing towards like to second base, like second base, like a left-handed hitter, not a second base as a right-handed hitter, you know, as, as a second baseman, when there's a right-handed hitter, you play different from when there's a second, when there's a left-handed hitter that's up. So he was basically really getting his shoulders wrapped. Like he could only see from his left eye. He couldn't see from his right eye. And that forced him to, what was your first move to do? that way because you're fighting your body so he was diving in and his shoulders which you want your shoulders to be slightly to second base but you don't want to be too far where you you know your first move is to throw those shoulders open and roll over and that's where he was and you'll see it in this video right here you'll see that he starts diving in look how much he's diving in right there and look where his shoulders are he's like completely blocked right now he got a good load got a good separation between his hands and um and his his foot so you see that got that good separation but look how far he is closed off and then your first move is he look he's fighting his body right now to get to this pitch because he's so closed off and then boom, you're just going to roll over this ball. And you see how he, look how he finishes right there. He's beat and he's just fighting his body because of the issue. You see that? He can't get through it because he's fighting his body. He's fighting his body. He's fighting his body. And then he's just basically welling out. And then boom, it beats him obviously. And uh, yeah, look at that. So that's basically what you want to work on is if your shoulders are going too far diving in look how it keeps diving diving and then his first move is to vacate that shoulder see that shoulder just vacate just that shoulder starts vacating boom and then you know obviously it beat him and uh you rolled that one over it's trying to catch up so you roll it over so that would be you know another thing that you want to check on is your shoulders are you you know are you too rotated because again if you're over rotated your first move is to you know basically you're, you're trying to get your hands to the ball so you know i like to do this thing with him and i did it with him basically we're in the cage and i set up a baseball that was right in front of him um maybe like when he was in his batting stance i put it like straight in front of him and then i put a baseball like out to the side of him and I was like what's the quickest way and I said go pick up that baseball that's in front of you I said what's the quickest way to that ball and he just walks straight to the ball and he gets it and I say see that is basically that's the fastest way to get to you know the ball everything's linear in baseball you want to be linear as a hitter you don't want to be you know you don't want to be going to the other ball to get it and I told him that too I was like now this is what you're doing. You're going to the other ball to get to your ball. And I was like, do that. So he literally walked over, picked up that ball, then he went to the other ball and picked it up. I was like, that's a longer route, right? And that's basically just to show him, you know, you want to be linear to the ball. You want to go straight and be direct to it. And by, you know, we worked on his shoulders not being over rotated and that um, he didn't and he stopped diving in as well. And you'll see like your BPs, if his BPs, when he would dive in, when he would hit the ball to left field, he would top spin it because he was fighting his body to get to that, that ball. And what you do, you just basically top spin it. You couldn't drive the baseball. So that right there is something that you wanna, you know, look at that. That's an issue right there that you probably happen. If you're on a field, you're taking BP and you swing and you try to hit it to your pull side and try to drive the baseball and you're top spinning it and you're just hitting low liners you can't get it to back spin and, hit and drive the baseball your shoulders are a little bit too far over or you're diving in too much okay so that's something that you want to know so the next one is bat path 
um, or I guess I could say pour extension. There's, I can make these into two different ones as well, but we'll just put them together as well because we're gonna talk about the same stuff in both of them. But bat path, um, getting that extension through the ball. If you're, if you have poor extension, you're gonna start hitting ground balls because you're coming in and out of the zone. You wanna stay through it as long as you possibly can. Stay in the strike zone long. And if you're taking a swing where you're shortening your swing up, that's when you're gonna start rolling over the baseball. So what we got right here is him. Look how he's, he's better with his shoulders. But look at the swing pass. It was like a real defensive swing. And it was like hit here. And look how he, like he got there. And then he didn't get through it. Look how like short armed it. He T-Rexed it right there. He didn't like drive through that pitch. Like, you know, just drive through it. It was almost like he just tapped it. He just hit it. And that's what you want to do. You want to drive through that pitch. You want to catch it and continue through it. See how he just started roll? He hit it and just immediately rolled that wrist over. So his swing was short. Instead of being long through it, it was just right here and then he finished it. He didn't go way through it like he was trying to do damage. And so right there, that's something that you want to, you know, focus on. Um, What's your bat path, you know? Cause your bat path could be messing you up. And that's another thing. Um, we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. And the next thing I wanna talk about is poor grip. Now I said it in my video, uh, if you watched it, it was how to stop hitting pop-ups. And I'm going to put the link in the description below so that you'll be able to see that video. If you're gripping the bat in the box grip, I call this the box grip right here. It's you're just like it, it's just it's real deep in your palm it's not right here like a hammer that's in your hand you know what i mean it's real deep you don't want it real deep in your hand you don't want to get jammed and then your thumb swells up you don't want that that's no good you want to have it where it's in your you know knuckles right in here so you can control the barrel of the bat so having a better grip will help you. I like to line my knuckles up right here like this, and I felt like I could just, you know, play pepper with the ball, but you maybe want to do it a little bit more over instead of being just right here all the way to all your knuckles lined up. You could just be right in the middle. But if you have the box grip where you're like this, you're going to start rolling over the ball because you're not have a fluent path. You're real rugged and uh, that's going to force you to start rolling over the baseball. So that's something that you want to, you know, look into as well. Your grip, your grip. The next thing I want to talk to you about is your base. Now, your base is the most important part of hitting. And I talked about it briefly earlier because a pitcher is trying to break your base, trying to get you off balance. So your job as a hitter is trying to be as balanced as possible. If you can maintain your balance throughout a swing, throughout an bat, you're going to hit because you're gonna see the ball better and you're gonna be more consistent in getting the barrel to the ball. But if your base gets a little rocky, then you're gonna start rolling over the ball, right? So I'll show you a little swing that um, he wasn't too bad on his base, but I just wanna show you what I mean and give you an example. So here, and look how he starts pushing forward. You see how he, everything's going forward now? So his base is is off. So how are you gonna hit this is everything's on this front foot. So everything's pushing forward, pushing forward. And you wanna be as balanced as you possibly can, which is you wanna be 60% uh, here or 40% here or 50% here or 50% here or 55%. That's what we wanna do is we wanna be as balanced as we possibly can, right? Throughout the swing. And once you start drifting all your weight to this front foot, you got nothing on your swing. Now you just become you know, you're just flicking the ball and you're not driving it, you see? And then you see how he just rolled that wrist over because everything's out front. So it's just boom, roll over, and then it's 
oh man, I gotta run, I gotta run. And you know, then it's off to the races and you're disappointed as you're running down first base. You know, we've all been there, but that's what you wanna do is you want to basically protect your base. And if you look at all the great hitters, they're always behind the baseball. They're never going out to get the baseball. Now, I'm not saying your point of contact shouldn't be out front. You're definitely, your point of contact should be out front, but you should be behind the baseball as you're hitting it out front. And you see right now, he's pushing towards the baseball. Push, 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 roll over. Like there's no power in that swing right now because everything is moving forward and everything's on this front foot. You wanna be back here and driving slightly upwards through the baseball. Get on plane with it and drive sl slightly upward. And the, that's the strongest position because you're working from the ground up. Once you put all this weight on this front foot, then it's the hope and pray method. So the next thing I wanna talk about is timing because timing is super important. Um, a lot of you guys are rolling over just because you're just late or you're way too early. So timing could be a really, really big issue in you basically rolling balls over. Let's go back to that swing where we talked about um, him diving in a little bit. So let's go back to that swing right there. So this swing right here. Look how this ball is so deep on him. He's so beat. So he's trying to catch up. So what is he gonna do? He's just gonna roll his wrist over because he's so late. So some of you guys could be really, really late or you're really, really early. So that's something right there that, you know, is a big, big key. And I think, you know, everyone talks about extension. And personally, in my opinion, if you're not on time, you won't even allow yourself to be extended. So uh, timing solves up a lot of these issues that you guys might be having. So, you know, you definitely want to say to yourself, are you on time? And you know that by if you hit a ball, you're a right-handed hitter, and let's say you drive the ball to right field down the line, foul then that means you're late. And if you drive the ball to the left field line foul, that means you're early. And it's better to be early than it is to be late. So um, definitely look at yourself and evaluate yourself. Like I said, every time I would get into the batter's box and I see a pitch, I would step out, take a deep breath and say, am I on time? Yes, okay. And then the next thing I would say, was that pitch a strike? If you're saying yes to yes, or yes and yes to both of those questions, you're going to hit because you're on time and you're swinging at strikes. Usually we're rolling over because we're swinging at balls or we're late. Uh, and I would say more than times we're late. So I'm gonna add a bonus here. This is number eight and it's standing too tall. And some of you may be like, how is that a point? Well, let me explain. Well see that he's standing straight up right well your job as a hitter is how consistent can you get into the launch position and as you see he's just standing straight up and then he starts moving into that position so now he's gathering to get in there right and if you're a slight bit off then that can force you to rolling over the ball right because you're slightly off now he's just a little bit out front here and that's why he rolled over that pitch he's just a little bit too far out front and that's also another one as well hitting the ball a little bit too out front you want to hit it right where your front foot is and he's hitting it a little bit more out front to that so that's why he rolled over on this pitch but again going back to the point of standing tall He's standing so tall and he's trying to get himself in the launch position. And if it's a slightly off, then, which is right here, this position here, if he's slightly off, then that's gonna cause rollover because he's late. So that's one of the things that you wanna check yourself on is are you standing too tall? Because you gotta figure out a way to get yourself in that position this position right here and if you're not in that position consistently you're going to 
basically have a weak base and start rolling over so that's what i would say to you guys who may be standing tall watch that and then also as we talked about earlier your point of contact if your point of contact gets too far out front then you can start rolling over and you just have to bring the point of contact back so that you can you know start driving the baseball just a click back and you'll start hammering it to the gaps and start driving the baseball if you're a little tick too far out front then you can roll over this ball just like you see him do right here so that's it let's continue the video so those are seven reasons why you're rolling over and now we're going to talk about the drills to fix the problem the things that we did so that he can start hitting more line drives okay so the first drill we did was work the bottom hand i know you guys are like but jermaine you talk about the top hand all the time yes but if you're really really dominant with that top hand you know you got to work the bottom hand okay and so we started to work on our bottom hand uh, and what we do is I would flip it inside to him and have him try to stay up the middle with it now high inside too, high inside and force him with his bottom hand to stay inside so he's working in here rather than working that way right so we're doing that and then the same thing with a uh, top hand um, with the one hand bat as well I'll throw it inside and force him to get here and get through it and hit a line drive right up the middle so we're working in here instead of working uh around the baseball right so that was the first drill that we did so the next drill we did was the back drill so basically what we did was just to show you an idea we put a net right here on his back and if he took the bat and hit this net he was going the wrong direction we wanted him to work more towards me and inside the baseball so he's going to finish instead of finishing you know where he's turning like this and hitting the net he was working more up and through it so that he stayed more inside that baseball and not getting around it where he's just turning where he's just turning so that was what we did put like a net or an l screen right behind his back so it forces him to stay, you know, this way to the ball instead of going that way to the ball, right? You could get a little bit too dominant with your hands. Um, so we wanted him to get in the right, uh, basically on the right path. So that's basically what we did to get him more moving the right way. So the next thing we did was we did the two T drill. And I did the two T drill because I wanted him to cover the entire plate. And what you're gonna do is, and I know I talked about it before, and if you've seen any of my breakdowns, Fernando Tatis Jr., uh, I talked about in the Barry Bonds drill, I believe, a Barry Bonds breakdown. If you watch those videos, you'll see that I talked about the two T drill. So basically what you're gonna do is have one T where you can hit a line drive up the middle. And this line drive is just not low liner. You want this one to go, you know, just like it goes up in the air, slightly up, a low liner up the middle. Then you're gonna put a T right in front of that one. Okay, so now it's two T's and basically that swing is gonna be on the upward projection to the left center gap. So now we're working the entire plate because if he worked, if he hit the ball a little further behind, that goes to right center in that gap. So you're low and high. You're low to your opposite field gap and you're high to your pull side gap. A lot of you guys might be you know, too high on your opposite field gap and too low on your pull side gap. And that was exactly what he was doing early on. He couldn't pull the ball in the air with backspin to drive the baseball because his shoulders were basically blocking him from uh, pulling the baseball. So every time he would top spin it to this pull side, but he would hit it and drive it to right center in the air high, but he couldn't pull the ball. So 
Most of us, we hit all of our home runs to our pull side, not opposite field. So he couldn't hit for power because he wasn't even pulling the ball the right way. So that's something that you want to, you know, look into is, you know, do the 2T drill where he starts getting you the bat path to hit a low liner over the second baseman's head for a double in the gap if you're a right-handed hitter, the opposite um, if you're a left-handed hitter, hit to the shortstop over the shortstop's head. And then as you keep turning and you're getting that bat path out front, you're pulling it to your pull side in the air. That's when you're going to really do damage and you're going to get more extra base hits and more line drives and that's what he started to do and uh he loved it Go going in bp hitting bombs you know before he wasn't doing that he was just top spinning it over sec uh shortstop and third baseman's head it'll just go bam it'll come off the bat hard and then just die couldn't get the ball in the air so the drill i recommend you is a drill that would teach your lower half how to work properly it will also create proper extension through the baseball and teach you how to hit the baseball out front the drill i recommend is the two t drill so what you're going to do is get two t's you're going to put one t at the distance where you can hit a line drive up the middle normally it's at the distance where when you stride it is even to your front foot so take a few swings and hit line drives up the middle. When I do this drill, I like the ball waist high, but you can put it wherever you want. After you lock in that distance, stay in the same spot and you're going to put the ball on the second tee now. This is going to force you to get through the baseball and drive it. Now you want to put the first tee lower so you don't hit the first tee. Your aim is to hit the second tee. When you hit this ball, it should be in your pool side gap, which means it would be in left center if you're a right-handed hitter, and if you're a left-handed hitter, right center gap. Watch the spin of your ball. Make sure it's back spinning. And also, don't try to pull it. Think up the middle and stay in the gaps. We don't want your front hip opening up too soon. The reason I like this drill is when you do this drill correctly, you learn how to stay on your backside, hit the ball out front and get extension through the baseball. And when you stay on your backside and hit the ball out front and get extended through the baseball, you really start hitting the baseball far. This is because you will pull the baseball the right way. And when you pull the baseball the right way, you get more extra base hits and home runs. It would also teach you how to use your lower half correctly. If you push forward on your front foot, you will hit a ground ball to your pull side. Now, if you have a stiff front leg and majority of weight on your backside, it will put you in a very good position to crush the ball. So the next thing we did, we hit lefty curve balls off a pitching machine. Now, the reason why I say this because uh, you know, it's something that I used to do to get myself inside the baseball. So you're hitting the lefty curveballs coming into you as a right hand hitter. If you are rolling over, if you got that top hand that's really dominant, you're going to roll over this ball every single time. So by hitting the lefty curveball, you got to stay inside of it more and drive it to the right center gap. So we worked on this off the pitcher machine and had it come into him. Um, we kept it up so it still like was a mistake and I, I like moving it around too. So if it's like a, a strike three pitch, I'll put it like low in on his front, front foot. I don't want him swinging at that, but I'll put it, I'll move the machine around to force him to work mentally and find the pitchers that he know he can start hitting. Just don't set the lefty curveball up and it's right down the middle every time. You should move it around so it force you to hit the mistakes and force you to lay off the pitches that are balls. So we worked on this so that he can stay um, inside the baseball and drive it. And this is what I've seen Yadier Molina do every single day with the Cardinals. He hit off the pitching machine and he hit lefty curveballs and he wanted to stay inside of it so he can hit more line drives and drive the baseball. So that's something that, you know, that's a tip for you guys that you get put in your bag as well. Hit If you're rolling over, hit lefty curveballs off a pitching machine. It'll force you to start staying inside the baseball and look to drive it up the middle, middle away. Now, if it is a hanger, maybe you, you, know, you catch it out front with the right spin and drive it just so you can feel good about yourself. But 
if you're trying to work on not rolling over, you got to work on hitting the ball to right center and staying inside of it so you're not rolling it over. So that's something that you want to take and put into your bag um, whenever you're feeling like you're rolling over. And then the last one we did with them, which is number five, is his hands were dropping. So we raised his hands a little higher and um, I would start throwing him balls more at the top of the zone and forcing him to get there. And if his hands were low, if they dropped, he was gonna roll over every time. You can see it, because he gotta change his posture to get there. So having his hands higher, he was able to start getting to that pitch at the top of the zone. So he then had the posture that was strong and he stayed in the same place. He had the strong base, strong posture that equals being more consistent and hitting more line drives. So there you have it. Those are the five drills that we did and we continue to do that he's going to you know, use every day to get him hits, to get him doubles, to get him line drives. And it's something that you guys can use at home to help you as well. Um, but since you watched until the end, I'm going to have you do a few things. Definitely hit that like button and comment below and let me know if you watched until the end. I want to know all you people who, you know, watched all the way into the end so I can thank you. And then the other thing is if you want to work with me or my team, um, what you're going to be able to do is look at the link look in the description i have a link in there that'll uh, lead you to a website to you know have me look at your swing and give you some advice and help you with you know getting to that next level like you know you're supposed to be i know that you can be better than where you are right now especially if you're rolling over so let me look at you or let my team look at you right and if that's something that you're interested in definitely look in the description if that's not I thank you for watching. I really appreciate you. I hope you got value from this. And if you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys, and I'm signing out.